to the 17th annual Elan Ramon International Space Conference. We are proud to once again hold this conference as we celebrate the 10th anniversary of Israel's Space Week. Our event is hosted by the Israel Space Agency at the Ministry of Innovation, Science and Technology, together with the Ramon Foundation and the Yuval Neiman Workshop for Science, Technology and Security at Tel Aviv University. We are excited to have the opportunity to celebrate Israel's incredible space ecosystem together with you. Our conference will feature sessions and panels on the vision of space agencies, the future of human spaceflight, cutting-edge research on space stations, climate change, remote sensing, cutting-edge satellites, and sustainable life in space. In addition to fascinating panels, don't forget to make use of our interactive virtual platform. Schedule B2B meetings with space experts from all over the world. Network with our sponsors and ask questions directly to our speakers. It is our great pleasure to open this year's conference with a message from the President of the State of Israel, Itzhak Herzog, and an address from the Minister for Innovation, Science and Technology, Orit Farkash Hakohen followed by a memorial ceremony for astronaut Ilan Ramon. Hold on to your chairs and adjust your computer screens. It's time to journey into outer space with us. Space Conference. My name is Manny Barzilai and it is my pleasure to guide you through this special event. On behalf of the Israel Space Agency and the Israel Innovation Science and Technology Ministry, together with the Ramon Foundation and the Yuval Neiman Workshop for Science and Technology and Security at Tel Aviv University, I would like to thank you all for virtually joining us for this conference from across the globe. Uh, although the coronavirus pandemic has inhibited us from meeting in person, we could not give up on the privilege and opportunity to host the annual Ilan Ramon conference once again. This year's event will introduce us to new dimensions surrounding cutting edge space technologies and endeavors. We hope that our sessions and panels will take you on a journey to discover new perspectives and insights on space technologies that will pave the, the way for new opportunities and insights on your journey through the space industry. The conference will include panels led by space industry's leading professionals with spotlights on breakthrough developments in space. Although we cannot meet in person, you are more than invited to meet and connect through our B2B platform with key players in the international community um, and to interact with our speakers through the questions and answers sections. I encourage you to be as active as possible through this conference. The Israeli space community is proud to be one of the world's leaders in space explorations and technology. With, with this in mind, I'm honored to open the 17th Ilan Ramon International Space Conference with a message from the President of the State of Israel, Mr. Yitzhak Herzog. Her Excellency, Sarah bint Yusuf Al Amiri, the UAE the Minister of State yeah. for Advanced Technology and Chairwoman of the UAE Space Agency, Minister Orit Farka Shakohen, Minister of Innovation, Science and Technology of Israel, distinguished heads of space agencies, the Ramon family, the Israel Space Agency, the Ministry of Innovation, Science and Technology, the Ramon Foundation, astronauts, the educators, students, dear friends. I'm so pleased to greet you today at the 17th annual Ilan Ramon International Space Conference from the office of the President of Israel. When Ilan Ramon traveled to the stars, he looked out the window towards our planet Earth and remarked, we are gazing down upon you and spread below is a world without borders, full of peace and splendor. To Israelis, this very notion of the name Ilan Ramon evokes feelings of bravery, longing, and hope. 
The pride we felt as a nation having an astronaut of our own in space cannot be overstated, whilst the grief we experienced upon learning that Ilan would not make it back home remains with us even today. With that said, our endeavors to understand the upper limits of our atmosphere and beyond represent the best of humanity. Just like Ilan Ramon, we are working across borders with partners, old and new, towards a shared purpose. We are committed to using the experience and knowledge gained in space to benefit life down here on Earth, to gain insights and refine technologies that could help humanity address some of its own most pressing issues, such as climate change. This conference, initiated by the late beloved Rona Ramon, who founded the Ramon Foundation following the tragedy that took her husband, is therefore an important opportunity to share, to learn, and to benefit from a multitude of viewpoints on such a specialized area of expertise. As President of the State of Israel, I am personally committed to the research of space technologies and deeply impressed by the constant progress. Although it was hard to envision following the Columbia disaster, Prime Minister Ariel Sharon then declared that one day we would have another Israeli astronaut. Indeed, my good friend Eitan Stiebe, who served under Colonel Ramon in the Air Force of Israel, is continuing his former commander's voyage into the skies. Eitan, I am confident that your journey will inspire a new generation of Israelis to dream big, aim high, and to continue to reach for the stars. And I wish you the best in your endeavor, and of course, come back safely home. Thank you all for contributing to this important conference. Stay safe, and let's reach the sky. Thank you so much, President Herzog. I'm now delighted to introduce Mrs. Orip Farkas Cohen, Minister of Innovation, Science and Technology, to deliver her opening remarks. Dear guests, President of the State of Israel, Mr. Yitzhak Herzog, Her Excellency Sarah El Amiri, the United Arab Emirates Ministers of State for Advanced Technologies and Chairwoman of the UAE Space Agency, Mrs. Zandberg, the Minister of Environmental Protection, Dear members of the Ramon family, distinguished heads of space agencies, all distinguished guests, I am pleased to speak with you at the 17th Ramon International Space Conference. Started in memory of Ilan Ramon, Israel's first astronaut, few could have imagined the impact the Ramon Foundation would have in this time. Many thousands of people have been impacted Israel has its own space legacy, and it is growing. For years, the Israel Space Agency has invested in the future of Israel's space capabilities. Ten days ago, Israeli eight satellites built by high school students were launched into space. Students born after the Columbia mission crashed, students who grew up hearing about Ilan Ramon's legacy, Jewish and Arab teenagers, Teenagers from the north, center, and south of Israel in the suburbs. When we invest in our youth, we invest in our future. This year's Space Week theme is new space, cutting-edge technologies and space endeavors. Cutting-edge technologies are transforming the space ecosystem and the space industry. Costs have been reduced to develop, to build, and to launch. Non-governmental actors are now part of the growing ecosystem. In this new space environment, the Israeli government remains crucial through the space agency in my ministry as a facilitator and enabler. The ministry and the agency and the innovation authority has approved a grant of 19 billion million shekels in order to promote projects in high technology in the space industry. We are invested in the Ultrasat project to invest in small, affordable satellites. And also we are joining the Artemis Accords aimed at landing the first woman and first person of color on the moon. We're about to sign this MOU with NASA and we're happy for that. Huge space in space diplomacy and international cooperation. 
We signed an MOU with the United Arab Emirates, boosting ties and cooperation and collaboration between the two space agencies. Ilan Ramon said, I am certain flying to space will become common. It might take 50 or 100 years, but it will happen. Maybe by children, my children will be able to buy a ticket and fly. We see a lot of this vision unfolding before our eyes. While Ilan Ramon's biological family may not have reached space, the children raised on his legacy in Israel are there. The 250 schools that built eight satellites already are in orbit. They are all, in a sense, the children, the legacy of Ilan Ramon. Have a fruitful evening and enjoy the Space Week in Israel. Professor Ben Israel, uh, lead this organization that in many ways is, in, is the, the, the power behind organizing um, this event um, before the COVID-19 situation, the International uh, Space Conference was held at the Tel Aviv University. Now, Itzik, if I'm not mistaken, sits in his house, but hopefully next year you will all see him in person. Itzik, the stage is yours. Uh, thank you. Welcome, all of you, to the 17th uh, Ilan Ramon International Space Conference. We really wanted, as it was in previous years, to have it uh, as a real physical and not virtual conference. But unfortunately, the COVID pandemic did not allow us to do that. I very much hope that next year we will be able to see each other face to face, to take advantage of all the opportunities that such meetings provide. Uh, let me talk a little bit about space. It is no secret that we are living in an age where space is uh, undergoing a revolution, a real revolution. One example is in who would believe only a few years ago that a group from the private sector could initiate, build, and launch a lander to the moon, and all this in a tiny country like Israel. This is exactly what was done in Genesis Bereshit project, and I'm happy to announce that uh, Genesis 2 has already been initiated and set in motion, and this time with even uh, a more ambitious mission, the goal is to land two landers on the moon. Until recently, we thought that only governments could carry such projects, but no more. We are already in an era in which space were uh, space is changing, everything in space is changing rapidly. Technologies are becoming more valuable and costs are decreasing. Israel, despite its small size, has always seen itself as a pioneer in space. And this new trend, the new space trend, suits us very well and makes our space activity more and more possible. Some say that space technology is important for the future of mankind. Other people think that the future lies in the development of human abilities of the younger generations. And we say there is no contradiction between the two. On the contrary, there is nothing like pursuit of space to attach the younger, to attract the younger generation to science and technology. And the story of Genesis attests to more than a thousand witnesses. Let me take this opportunity and also congratulate Her Ex Excellency Sarah bint Yusuf El Amiri, the United Arab Emirates Minister for Advanced Technologies and also Chairman of the UAE Space Agency who participates in this conference. As we all know, an agreement between the two countries has recently been signed to space uh, cooperation, and it is no coincidence that one of the issues of the cooperation in this agreement is genesis. Finally, let me mention my friend Ilan Ramon, who perished in the Columbia shuttle disaster. Uh, the foundation set up by his wife Rona aims to uh, perpetuate his memory through the connection between the two themes I've mentioned, space and education for young generations. May Ilan and Rona Ramon, rest in peace. I hope to see you all physically next year in Tel Aviv. Thank you. Thank 
you so much, Professor Ben Israel. Pictured on the screen are the crew members of the Columbia Space Shuttle. Almost 19 years ago, on February 1st, 2003, Space Shuttle Columbia disintegrated upon re-entering Earth atmosphere, killing all seven crew members of the STS-107 mission. The Ilan Ramon International Space Conference is held annually to commemorate the seven brave Columbia Space Shuttle crew members, Rick Husband, William McCall, Kalpana Chula, David Brown, Laurel Clark, Michael Anderson, and the first Israeli astronaut, Colonel Ilan Ramon. Colonel Ramon's journey into space became a national and historical event, impacting on Israelis and Jews across the world and creating an unwavering sense of national space pride. Twelve years ago, Ilan's wife, Rona Ramon, together with the Ministry of Innovation, Science and Technology, established the Ramon Foundation, which is dedicated to commemorating the late Ilan Ramon and the Columbia crew. Inspired by Colonel Ramon's dedication to educating Israel's next generation of space leaders, the Ramon Foundation supports space projects such as scholarships, competitions, and advanced educational activities. This project, which channeled uh, the tragedy of the crew into a force of good, works with over 100,000 children and students every year. It is now my pleasure to introduce Tal Ramon from the Ramon Foundation to share a few words in memory of Ilan Ramon and the Columbia Space Shuttle. Coming out now, as they are making their way to the astronaut pad. Commander Rick Husband, payload specialist Ilan Ramon, pilot William McCool, and mission specialist Michael Anderson, David Brown, three, two, one. We have booster ignition and liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia with a multitude of national and international space research experiments. Houston now controlling the flight of Columbia. Good morning, Ken. Good morning uh, to all. And, uh, Good morning to uh, my wife, Rona, the love of my life. Rona, Ava, Chayai, Vainadim, and you have a friend at Kool, and we're with Gagia. We took uh, several special things, uh, first of all the Israeli flag and the Israeli uh, declaration of independence. Mission Control confirms it lost contact. There's been no further communication with the shuttle Columbia. Columbia is lost. There are no survivors. Uh, 
This conference is dedicated to my father, Ilan Ramon, and uh, the SDS 107 crew. And we believe that their smile is our legacy. And this is what Space Week has been all about. Um, this week has been filled with educational events for adults, for youth, for children. And it's been such an amazing time. And first of all, I would like to thank uh, the Ministry of Science and Technology and the Israeli Space Agency for taking uh, part and making this happen. And I want to thank you all uh, for being with us today in this kind of different, uh, different kind of conference this year, but uh, special in the same way. Um, and I would like to just kind of start off with a musical piece that I wrote, and it's called If. Thank you. I would like now to welcome Her Excellency Sarah Biusef El Amiri, the UAE Minister of State for Advanced Technology and Chairwoman of the UAE Space Agency for her note address. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, 
Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. And thank you for the warm welcome. On behalf of the UAE government, our leaders and our people, it's an honor and a privilege for me to be speaking here today. First, please allow me to extend my gratitude to the President of the State of Israel, Isaac Herzog, and Minister of Innovation, Science and Technology, Orit Farkash, for their generous patronage of this event, as well as their ongoing commitment to developing partnership with the UAE space sector. We are entering a new era of global partnership that will enable every nation to embrace space. An era in which nations, big and small, economies both developed and developing, should have equal opportunities to reap the benefits of space. An era in which new pathways can be unlocked for enhanced social and economic growth. To maximize this potential, it is more important than ever for the international community to collaborate and cooperate. It is now more than a year since our two nations, Israel and the UAE, came together under a shared belief to, to promote peace, stability, and economic prosperity across the Middle East. The historic Abraham Accords has already paved the way to closer ties in trade, technology, investment, and innovation. And I am pleased to say it has deepened our ties in space exploration. As countries adapt to an uncertain, complex, and fast-changing world, Public and private sector stakeholders in space have an important united mission to shape the development of global space capabilities and ensure great investment and even greater space exploration benefits humankind at large. With that, we need as governments and nations to focus collectively on three principles. The first, on the international front, we all need to work together to ensure that space activities to remain peaceful. We need to collaborate to address the challenges of the crowding in space, all while enabling societies through the use of space data and technology that impacts both public good and economic development. The second, as agencies, we need to continue to drive innovation by alleviating risk from the private sector. We need to make capability and capacity development at the front and center of our agenda. It is no longer about funding programs just to get the next spacecraft somewhere. It is about funding the next program that will get the sp next spacecraft in space that would benefit and impact societies, and more importantly, develop the capabilities that both the industry and the research and development, uh, research and development capabilities in both science and technology at large. And the third is we need to work together with different sectors to realize the potential that space data and technologies can have on the development of those sectors. Space should be marketed as one of the tools for industrial development. Utilizing those three principles is what we are currently doing in the Emirates and what we're designing and developing the programs that the space agency is currently funding. On the back of the success of the Emirates Mars mission, we reflected on its outcomes, but more importantly, we reflected on, our, on, on the unconventional approach. We did that last February after successfully arriving at Mars. And this is what we, were, what we learned. For our current space programs, the following needs to be kept in, the, in mind. The approach to development of programs should be unconventional and it should be built for the purpose that those missions want to achieve. We strive to learn from others, to learn the why and the how, but we rely on our own objectives and aspirations to develop the methodology of our programs. And the second, that plans are great to map a course of actions and outcomes needs, and, and the objectives and the purpose needs to be unwavering. But this needs to be coupled with flexible and agile implementation methodologies. We need to be able to react to changes in the world. This is one of the outcomes that we learned from the pandemic over the course of almost two years now. In celebrating our country's golden jubilee this past December, and in preparation for the next 50 years of growth, of growth, science and technology has been identified as one of the cornerstones of development of both of our economy and our society. It is also a tool by which we ensure the sustainability of our planet. And it's the back on, of the three principles and the two lessons learned that we, that we got out of our experience over the past decade in the, space pro in the space program in the Emirates, we designed our new mission, which we will be sending a spacecraft to the asteroid belt with a flyby by Venus, with a primary purpose of building capabilities and capacities within the private sector in the nation, creating new opportunities, increasing the competitiveness of the space industry within the country, and more importantly, 
building long-lasting industry-to-industry relationships across the world. It is about exploration. It is also about benefiting humankind and adding on to human knowledge and also about the development of capabilities across the board within the country and fostering better global relationships. The key, therefore, to executing our ambitions is partnerships, and we believe in fostering a spirit of collaboration. Space is a theme that unites all of humanity together. And after all, it is not just the future of a single nation that hinges on our ability to penetrate the deepest reaches of space, but it is the destiny of humankind. Space is the next frontier of international cooperation, and it has always been a frontier of great international cooperation. By joining together with our partners today, we can build a better future for all. And thank you all once again for joining us here, and I'm excited and honored to be part of this global conference. Thank you.